Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Brown Foreman Corporation, ticker symbol BFB. We're looking at Brown Foreman today because it's part of Terry Smith's Fundsmith portfolio. Terry Smith, although his performance is probably not that stellar this year, is a British investor who's been referred to as the English Warren Buffett. He holds a diversified portfolio of above average businesses, and Brown Foreman is one of them. So currently, Brown Foreman is trading for $66.44 per share. Over the past year, their stock price is down 8.5%, and so while they are down, they are beating the S&P 500 over this time. Over five years, Brown Foreman is compounding at a rate of 8% annually. Over 10 years, their stock price is compounding at a rate of 9.5% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the past nearly 18 years, Brown Foreman has compounded at a rate of 11% annually. Keep in mind that this is not including their dividend payouts, and currently they're paying out a modest dividend yield of about 1.1%. Brown Foreman's stock price has not deviated too much from their 52-week high and their 52-week low. They're about $12 below their 52 week high and they're six dollars above their 52 week low brown foreman is a large business they have a 32 billion dollar market cap for additional background about the company brown foreman is the largest u.s domiciled producer of distilled spirits the firm reports only a single operating segment and whiskey represents its primary business driver generating roughly three quarters of all sales undergirded by the jack daniels brand as well as bourbons such as woodford reserve and old forester Notable non-whiskey offerings include tequilas such as El Jimador and Herradura. The firm operates globally with products sold in more than 170 countries and adapts its route to consumer model depending on regulation as well as the prevailing competitive dynamics in a given market. For example, it sells through distributors in the United States but operates its own logistics apparatus in many countries. The firm remains under the control of the Brown family. Brown Foreman was founded in 1870 and is headquartered in Louisville, Kentucky. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Brown Foreman based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress. It will continue to evolve and improve over time, and it also serves as an opportunity to learn in public. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. So by looking for businesses that are earning 14% average returns on capital or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based on the quality of the business with the companies we're looking for earning about twice as good as average returns on capital. In all five of these years, Brown Foreman has earned well above average returns on capital. Their lowest returns came in 2021 with about 18.5%. Over their last 12 months, they're earning more than 24% return on capital. And averaged out over this time, Brown Foreman is earning about 23.5% average returns on capital. And so this is a check to start things off on metric number one. That average return is nearly three times better than that of the typical business. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into their business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. So over this time, Brown Foreman has increased their revenues by nearly a quarter. So they've experienced 23% revenue growth. Their earnings are up by a quarter as well, growing at exactly 25% over this time. And most importantly, their free cash flows have grown by 46% over the last five years. All three of these numbers are gonna be up, and this is gonna be our second check in a row on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Brown Foreman on a per share basis. So this will be building off of our previous metric where we learned that they had earnings growth, here we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. Brown Foreman has grown their earnings by 25% over this time. And at the same time, they've kept their shares outstanding basically flat. They bought back less than 1% of their shares outstanding over the last five years. Their earnings per share growth is going to be almost entirely dependent on their earnings over this time, which were up. So their earnings per share are up as well. This is our third check in a row here on metric number three. Metric number four is going to be very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the past five years. Again, their free cash flows are up 46% over this time and with their shares outstanding basically flat. This also equates to free cash flow per share growth. Yet another check here on metric number four. And so far through our first four metrics, we are a perfect four checks and no X's. 
Also, there are two things worth noting here is that over extended periods of time, meaning seeing 10 plus years of their earnings and free cash flow results or more, we would ideally want a business's earnings and free cash flows to be roughly the same, as that's potentially a very rough measure of quality accounting in the business. And if there were huge discrepancies between these numbers over large extended time periods, that could be potentially indicative of either aggressive accounting or even extreme cases, outright fraud. That doesn't seem to be the case here. Secondly, it's worth noting that having this strong per share growth coupled with their high average returns on capital, those two things combined to really help compound the intrinsic value of a company's shares over time. There are a couple other metrics we ideally want to be looking at, especially for potential long-term compounders, but Brown Foreman seems to have both of these going for them, and they seem to have a pretty steady track record to boot. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing leverage. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during times of economic hardship, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor financial outcomes. Brown Foreman ended their fiscal 2022 with nearly one and a half billion dollars worth of net debt. Over this last half year or so, they brought their net debt position down to one billion three hundred and fifty million dollars. So they have reduced their net debt. And over their last five years, they brought in about three billion four hundred million dollars worth of free cash flow. Based off their abilities to produce free cash flows, it looks like the company would be able to pay down all of this debt pretty comfortably in only a three year time period. And so relative to the free cash flows that they're producing in their business, it looks like Brown Foreman is using a very reasonable amount of leverage in their company. This is another check on metric number five, and we are still perfect five for five through our first five metrics. Our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially give us a risk premium to the rate of the 10-year treasury yield and potentially give us another reason to be interested in Brown Foreman as a business. So we're using their total enterprise value here rather than their market cap because total enterprise value is going to take into account both their market cap and their net debt position and give us a picture of the business that's more akin to economic reality and that's more similar to as if Brown Foreman were a private company. So currently Brown Foreman has a $33.4 billion total enterprise value and we learned that over the last five years they produced about $3.4 billion worth of free cash flow. So this means that in an average year, Brown Foreman is producing about $675 million of free cash flow. So when we divide their $675 million of average free cash flow by their $33.4 billion total enterprise value, that is only going to give us an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield of approximately 2%. So that's about half of the rate of the yield of the 10-year treasury currently, three percentage points below that 5% mark we're looking for for a potentially adequate risk premium. And so on an average basis, this is going to be our first and only X coming in all the way at the end here for Brown Foreman. Also worth being aware of is that their last 12 months worth of free cash flows are up from where they've been historically over the past five years. So Brown Foreman has produced $767 million worth of free cash flow in their last 12 months. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $767 million worth of last 12 months of free cash flows, by their $33.4 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a 2.3% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So still quite a bit below that potential risk premium we were looking for and below the yield of the 10-year treasury there as well. Although again, they've grown their free cash flows over their last 12 months, compared to what they've been at historically on an average basis over the past five years. Keep in mind though that this is just one data point out of six here and that this analysis is meant to be holistic in nature. Also please be aware that this is not financial advice. Then here we're looking at Brown Foreman's dividend profile. Brown Foreman has steadily but incrementally increased their dividend payouts in all five of these years. At the same time they've grown their free cash flows over this time as well. If we're just looking at their free cash flow compared to their normal dividends, they've been more than able to support these dividend payouts with their free cash flows. One interesting thing about Brown Foreman is that they paid out these special dividends as well. So they paid out a dollar of special dividends per share in each of 2018 and 2022. While these might have not explicitly been covered by the cash flows in each of those given years, based off of their buildup of free cash flows from these intervening years, they've had more than enough cash flow over this time to cover paying out all of these dividends and then some. Especially being a family controlled business, it does look like Brown Foreman is being very reasonable in their dividend payouts. Again, currently they have a modest dividend yield right now of only 1.1%. Then finally, here we're using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for Brown Foreman. So starting with their current free cash flows per share and then projecting these cash flows to grow over the next 20 years based off of historical growth assumptions for the business of how they've grown their free cash flows historically dating all the way back to 1990. 
So assuming a growth stage over the next 10 years where they're able to grow their free cash flows at a rate of just under 9% annually, then assuming a terminal stage for the 10 years out after that, so projecting 20 years into the future in total, where their growth rate decreases by a couple of percentage points, if we add in their tangible book value today, then based off of these historical assumptions, which are assumptions that you need to do your own homework on to determine whether or not these are going to be potentially applicable as a baseline projected estimate for Brown Foreman going forward into the future. A fair value for the company, if you were seeking a 10% rate of return, would approximately be around $31 per share. Again, using these same historical growth assumptions, it looks like you could potentially expect about a 2% rate of return going forward from Brown Foreman. Keep in mind that you have to do your own homework on these assumptions and that this might not be giving the business their fair due. As they've exhibited a very strong and stable track record of free cash flow growth, this model might not be giving them their fair due in terms of the durability of their business and some of their competitive advantages that are inherent in their products. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be highly sensitive to the nature of its inputs. So to understand what would be more realistic inputs for this business, you're just going to have to do more work and learn more about it. Please also be aware that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professional. So in summary, Brown Foreman checks the box on five out of our six metrics. One thing I did not mention earlier is that Brown Foreman is actually a dividend aristocrat. So dividend aristocrats are members of the S&P 500 who have consecutively increased their dividend payments for each of the past 25 years. In the case of Brown Foreman, they've consecutively increased their dividends for each of the past 38 years. And based off of the company's dividend profile, it looked like their dividends were well supported by their cash flows. So Brown Foreman, especially given the incremental nature of their dividend increases and the overall quality of their business, is likely in strong consideration to become a potential future dividend king. So they would need 12 more years of consecutively increasing their dividend payouts to be able to hit that mark. But that is something that could potentially be in store for them in the future. So additionally, Brown Foreman earns average returns on capital that are three times better than that of a typical business averaging out at about 23.5% annually. They've experienced stable revenues, earnings, and free cash flow growth over the last five years, and they've kept their shares outstanding basically flat over this time. They're also using very modest amounts of leverage in their business relative to their free cash flows and do not look like they are in a overly levered or a precarious financial position in that regard. However, based off both their current and their average free cash flows compared to their enterprise value, those are not giving us the potential adequate risk premiums that we were looking for, especially weighing that against the yield of the 10-year treasury right now. Then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Brown Foreman based off of their historical abilities to grow their free cash flows dating all the way back to 1990, which are assumptions that you need to determine for yourself whether or not those are going to be potentially applicable and accurate going forward for Brown Foreman. From today's valuations, you would only be able to reasonably expect about a 2% rate of return going forward over the next 20 years for Brown Foreman. So again, there are a number of reasons why this might not potentially be accurate and why this potentially would not be giving the company its fair due. So it's up to you to do your own research to learn more about the business. It's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. Instead, this analysis serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Brown Foreman going forward or not. So one resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about Brown Foreman is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you will probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks, but over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's own algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years worth of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. And you can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. If all of that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. There are other free resources that you can check out to learn more about a business. 
So just comment below if you're interested in those and I can direct you to those as well. As a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this deeper research as if you're gonna own 100% of a business and you can truly understand that business and know all of its ins and outs and understand the underlying essence of the business and know what's important and what's not important for the company going forward. As you learn more about Braun Foreman, you'll get a better understanding of both the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of their business, and you'll be able to determine for yourself what a potentially appropriate intrinsic value for the business will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Braun Foreman Corporation, ticker symbol BFB. Again, Braun Foreman is part of Terry Smith's Fundsmith portfolio, and they're a dividend aristocrat of 38 years. Plus, the business has been around for more than 140 years. So if you enjoyed today's analysis, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Brown Foreman with me, and have a great day.